So I am hard at work today, preparing a new class. Now it's not a new class for me, but it's a new format of a class because it's going to be all online. So I thought it would be a good chance to walk you through how to study for accounting because it's the same process that I use that you can use to help you do better in accounting. Welcome to Accounting How To. I'm your host, Carolyn Grimm, and that's my sidekick, Terrence. And we're here to put the fun in accounting fundamentals. So here's the thing about studying accounting. It's different from a lot of your other classes. In some classes where you're learning about, oh, management or organizations and interpersonal relationships and things like that, it's more of a exploring how you feel about things or studying the way other people have done things. But with accounting, you actually have to dig in, learn how to do the thing, and then how to apply it. So there are right answers and wrong answers in accounting. And it's not one of those things where you can just start talking and eventually your instructor will be like, okay, okay, you, you've shown me that you know something. Accounting is different. It's more like learning a language or learning a software package. So if you want to learn a new language, you don't wait until the night before and then try to cram everything you possibly can into your head before you leave the country. You want to start way before that. So with accounting, the first thing is you never want to wait until the last minute. But let me walk you through how I actually prepare for a class, because I think it will be helpful for you as well. So the first thing I do is I open up my really large accounting textbook. And what they don't tell you about accounting is um, you got to be really strong. You know, these books are heavy. The first accounting class I ever taught, I ended up with um, bursitis of the elbow because of the heaviness of these books. But the first place that I start is I want to get a high level view of the class. I want to like, I want to understand like what's ahead on my little road trip through accounting. And you find that out by going directly to your syllabus. Or if you're like me and you have to actually create the syllabus, you're going to go to your textbook first. So I'm going to look at our, our table of contents and I'm going to get a good idea of what things need to be covered in this class. And I know that in this class, this is a two semester class. So we're going to be dividing the textbook up into basically halves. And that's the amount of material that we need to get through. So then I start to kind of map that out. And I look at it and I say, so we've got in this book five parts to the book and each book has a bunch of chapters to it. So I know that we're gonna cover part one and two. It's gonna be approximately nine chapters. And then I start to put together the structure of the course. So as I start to build this out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go to the table of contents and I'm gonna look at what chapter one is supposed to cover. And when you look at a table of contents, you'll see that it has um, bolded or highlighted areas. And that's your, your chapter outline right there. Those are the big topics that we're gonna be talking about. So I kind of familiarize myself with this. And if I was going into take an accounting a class, I would look at this before the class, right? So I can at least have an idea of what we're talking about. And I'm not going in completely ignorant of anything that's going to happen in the class, because this gives me a heads up about what we're going to cover. So once I've familiarized myself with the table of contents and with the outline for that particular chapter, the first thing I do when I'm doing a new chapter, either preparing it or if I'm studying something myself, is I go to the very back of the chapter. I don't even read anything in the chapter yet. I go right to the back of the chapter and I look at the review center or whatever that review area of the chapter is called. And I go right there because what that's gonna give me is it's going to give me the key points for this chapter. It's gonna be called key points or key takeaways or something along those lines. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read through those because that's going to really give me a heads up as to what the authors of the textbook thought was important. And if the authors of the textbook think it's important, there's a good chance that your instructor, your professor is going to think they're important too. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put this book down because it's really heavy. <sighs> wow. And then if you want to continue with that road trip analogy, because who doesn't like a good road trip? love road trips. So you can think of those landmarks as being kind of like those mileposts along the way that tell you where you need to go next. 
And then you can look at something like your homework and think of that as kind of like a tourist guide. You know, your tourist guide will tell you when you're in this location, be sure that you don't miss these things. And that's what your homework is doing. It's saying these are the things from the chapter that are important that we want you to know. It's your opportunity to practice the concepts of the chapter. That's what you're doing. You're practicing this new skill. So if we're talking about a language, you're going through and you're repeating the phrases that you're learning for that particular chapter. And with accounting, every time you practice something, you get better at it, you build a stronger foundation. So once you've hit all of those must-see items on your homework, and you're feeling comfortable that you've mastered how to do those things, and it's all about how to do those things, it's how to do this journal entry, or how to handle this kind of a financial transaction. Once you've done those practice rounds, that sets you up for your quiz, your test. And quizzes and tests, you can think of them like river crossings. Like if you get across the river, which is your quiz or your test, then you know that it's okay to go on to the next thing. Because everything with accounting builds on the stuff before, right? So if you miss something in chapter one, you're going to struggle in chapter three, and it's going to come back to haunt you in your next accounting class too. So it's really important that you go through all of those steps in order to master the material. And then coming back to my class prep, I'm going to go through that for every single chapter. I'm going to look at the table of contents. I'm going to scan through that. I'm going to go to the back of the chapter. I'm going to say these are the key points. Then I'm going to have a list of videos or a list of lessons that I need to cover for that particular chapter. And then I'm also going to be looking at the homework and the quizzes and saying, what are the most important things that we want to make sure students know before we move on to the next lesson. So that's it. That's how I prep for a class. And if you use that same formula for prepping for your classes, you're going to do so well in accounting. So until next time, stay balanced, my friends.